this is the strangest Father's Day I've ever uh, been able to preach to in <laughs> over 50 years of ministry. And uh, But you know, praise the Lord, we're still getting the word out. Yeah. And uh, I was marveled. I, I am doing the Spanish worship, although we're not having a lot of Spanish-speaking <laughs> people coming to this service, but many of them are listening. And uh, they would call me on the phone and ask me, Pastor, when will you do the work, uh, services in Spanish again? And so we started two weeks ago uh, to do the services in Spanish. They're on YouTube. And those that speak Spanish, if you'd like to hear that, it's on YouTube, Temple Heights Baptist Church, and it'll pop up. And you're welcome to do that. But... Um, I was marveled. God always gives us more than what we expect. And this morning, uh, just before coming into the church, I looked to see how many had uh, clicked on the Spanish worship or listened to it entirely or on a portion of it. We had 285 hits just on the Spanish worship alone. And uh, so the Word of God is getting out. Um, I've had some good input from even other pastors in South America and in Central America and in the Caribbean uh, saying that it was such a blessing to them. And so that encourages me as a pastor that uh, we are an encouragement to others. That's what we want to be, a channel of blessing. You know, uh, Debbie said something there and it really clicked in my mind. Uh, she was thanking the, her uh, God for her father and uh, the circumstances of her father, how so she's planning to see him in heaven. I too am hoping and planning to see my father in heaven. My father accepted the Lord two weeks prior to his death. And uh, he was adamant against my being a preacher all my life. He wanted to, me to have finished my uh, medical uh, degree to be a doctor. And he was always against me in that sense. And the very last two weeks of his life, he asked my mom, Ada, you're going to heaven, right? She says, yes, I am, Donald. She says, I want to go too. I want to be with you. He says, well, you have to accept Christ as your Savior. He says, well, then I do. I accept Christ as my Savior. And those last two weeks of his life, my dad was brought up in a Christian environment, but he had gone wayward and he had become a black sheep of the family. And uh, he, his grandfather was a preacher. Believe it or not, I, I have a preacher in my family lineage, a Methodist preacher. He was a circuit riding preacher mm -hmm. up in Illinois. And he preached around a circuit and uh, on horseback. And uh, my dad, knew him and his mother was very close to the Lord and so I also hope to see my dad in heaven and uh, I heard this phrase several months ago and it really clicked in my mind we don't come from our parents we don't come from my parents you say pastor what are you saying we don't come from our parents no we don't we don't come from our parents we come from God through our parents. Each one of us that is born of the Spirit, you are chosen by God before the foundation of the earth, the Bible tells us. And He has chosen you, and you are His lineage. You are chosen with a divine purpose to fulfill. And so, Every child of God, you come not from your parents, you come from God through your parents. And just let that sink in. That really, really was a blessing to me when I really thought of that. We're so thankful this morning that we have visitors. Right. In spite of the day, we've got visitors today, and we have some for the very first time. We're thankful for you here that are here for the first time and one second time visit, right? Second time. 
and we have some visitors here also. Yeah, this is your second time, right? Yeah, you left this from Colombia. Colombia. Ray Zachary is in Orlando playing and the table people like This is his second time. Love my sister, right? And your sister, she's been here before. Yeah. And so we're happy to have you. Uh, what a blessing that in spite of the situation, we have visitors today. At this moment, I want to honor the Father's present. This is Father's Day, and uh, I asked Reuben Aramis, our pastor that we help in the Philippines, if they have Father's Day there, and he said, yes, they do. And uh, I asked also uh, Everaldo uh, Hernandez, uh, about Cuba. Do they celebrate Father's Day there? And they said, yes, they do. And so it seems like it's an international day, Father's Day. And so we want to honor those that are here with us also. Would the fathers that are here please stand up? If you're a father, would you stand up? Amen. One, two, three, four, five, and myself, six. At least we've got six here. Many are watching from home. Let's give each and every one of them an applause. Amen. I'm going to have a prayer over the fathers right now. I, I wish I could give you each a new car. But my budget doesn't allow for that. All right? My budget doesn't allow for that. But at least I can give you a prayer from my heart. And so... I raise you up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these fathers here present and grandfathers. Father, you uh, are the father of excellence and all of the characteristics that we need to have to be good fathers, we find in you and we read from the Holy Scriptures. Lord, we ask your blessings on these fathers here present. We pray that this service and the message that is going to come in, in just a few minutes, uh, it will be an exhortation to them. We pray that those that are watching online, may they be uh, uplifted also. May their faith be increased as fathers. Maybe there are some that are going through difficult, difficult circumstances either physical or economical now with uh, the virus on, uh, on, on the way. Maybe some have lost their jobs. and Lord, we don't know the situations, but we ask that you would undergird and lift them up, give them strength beyond their own comprehension. Father, bless each and every one here. May they enjoy this day with their loved ones. And we ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. I'd like you to open your Bibles with me, please. If you have your Bibles handy. I have uh, normally been preaching through the Bible in our Bible readings. And we encourage each and every one, continue with the Bible readings. We will get back to that on Wednesday and the following Sunday. But today, being of the special occasion, I wanted to have a special message directed to the family and the fathers. Amen? And so if you would open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 18, please. Genesis chapter 18, verses 17 through 19. God is speaking in these verses. And he's speaking of his special son, Abraham. Now we know that Abraham means father of many nations. So very pertinent for the message today, Abraham. And he says here in Genesis chapter 18, verses 17 through 19. And the Lord said, now in Spanish it says, and Jehovah said, I like that, amen? And it says here, and the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Now, 
What is he refer referring here? Well, we know that uh, Abraham had a nephew of Lot who had gone astray and was living in Sodom and Gomorrah. And God's plan was to destroy those cities of immorality and wickedness. And so God is saying here that he's going to reveal this thing to his son, Abraham. And, in, and then he says in verse 18, if you read Genesis 18, 18, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. Let's have a word of prayer at this moment. Lord, I ask your blessings afresh upon me as I proclaim your word and the message from the holy living word. We know that the Bible, the word of God, gives life. And I pray that today, those that are listening here in the auditorium and those that are afar listening uh, uh, on the internet, I pray that they will be touched and drawn closer to you. I pray that they will be strengthened. I pray that their faith will be increased. And I pray, Lord, especially for those that are listening, perhaps through curiosity, that you would touch their hearts, that they would open them and be saved today in the Lord Jesus Christ. I will be careful, Lord, to give you all the honor and praise for what you are going to do. For I ask it in Jesus' precious name, amen. I've entitled this message, A Victorious Family. Keys to have a victorious family. I thought that was a very pertinent title and message for today on Father's Day, being that the family is being attacked today more than ever before. Uh, the sanctity of the home is not what it used to be. Young people in general, in general uh, are not seeking God. It's a, it's, I, I praise the Lord that in our church, even though we are a small church, God has blessed us with young people. But there are many churches of friends that I have in the ministry that have small churches like us, and they don't have any young people. Because in general, young people, instead of coming to church, they're dropping out of church. Divorce rates have increased even among Christians, to be even equal to those that are non-Christians. Did you know that? And uh, marriage is a thing of the past. How many marriages do you actually see happening in churches today? Even in larger churches than us. We don't see that many marriages. I think I performed last year uh, both in the, in the uh, services here in the church and outside of the church that I was invited to perform marriages. I performed four marriages last year. And I was speaking to my pastor, uh, Brother Mark Hodges, who's in Winter Haven. And he said, and he has a church of close to 600 people. He said, Clark, you had more marriages. You performed more marriages than what I did. Marriage is a thing it's uncommon today what is happening i'll tell you what's happening people don't want to be committed they don't want to be committed and so they just live together and if it doesn't work out well you go your way and i'll go mine but that's not what honors the lord 
that does not bring honor and glory to the Lord. We need victorious families. We need families uh, that will have victory. Now, I looked for the word of victory. I, I like the word victory. I like those hymns that say victory in Jesus. Amen. I like anything that talks about victory. Do you know where victory comes from? After many battles. Victory comes after fighting battles. And victories are battles won. Did you know that in homes, there is no perfect family? And even among Christians, there are a lot of things that we need to work at. Amen? And so there's battles. There's emotional battles. There are, uh, uh, there are uh, uh, confrontational battles. There, there are battles in character, difference in character, economical battles. Did you know one of the biggest uh, reasons for divorce today is economics? Boy. Economics. And uh, uh, we, we find that people break up because of things like that. Victories. Fighting battles, victories won. It's not easy to have a victorious family. We can only have victory as Christians when Christ is the priority in our lives as individuals and is ever present in our home. Amen. There needs to be prayer in the home. As husband and wife, we need to pray together. Our children need to see us pray. Our grandchildren need to see us hold the Bible and read it. We need to show forth and lead the way so that our young people can see and taste what a victorious family is all about. <clears throat> now today, Satan is attacking the family as never before. You know why? Because he knows that if he can destroy the family, he can destroy our lives. He can destroy our church, and he can destroy our nation. And so everything begins with the family. I have said it before in previous messages, and I'm going to say it again. The way that we can get victory in our nation is right here in the local church. If we can get the church right and people can live victorious lives as families in the church, we will see victory come in our nation. Amen? Amen. We will see that. Now I'm going to give you four points and I'm going to stick to those four. I know that probably you can think of some other points, but I'm going to give you the points that the Lord put in my heart that these are the keys to have a victorious family. Keys to have a victorious family. Number one, as parents, we have to make the Lord our priority. We as parents have to choose and proclaim that we are going to serve him. You have to proclaim it. You have to proclaim it. And we find this very clearly mentioned. And uh, if you'll look in your Bibles, please. In the book of Joshua, chapter 24. Joshua was the second leader of Israel after Moses. And he led the children of Israel into the promised land to claim the promised land. And the book of Joshua... The theme is victory. I like anything that talks about victory. Amen? And if you read the book of Joshua, you'll see that they had a lot of battles. But the, we have victory after the battles are won. And the same thing in our homes. Now, at the end of Joshua, the book of Joshua, chapter 24 and verse 14 and 15, he was an old man at this moment. And he says this, Now therefore, fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served 
on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which our fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or of the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's a, that's a very powerful statement. And so I find that that's a key. If we're going to have a victorious family, we have to choose and we have to proclaim openly that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that's a key. If you don't proclaim that and you don't repeat it to yourself and you don't show forth to your family, it's going to go wayward. And we find this very clearly. We find this very clearly. The second point, the second key to a victorious family, we need to teach about the Lord by our own example. You know, you can say anything. Uh, there's a phrase in Spanish, dicen, uh, las palabras lo lleva el viento, translated into English. Your words can be carried away by the wind. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's a famous movie, Go On With The Wind, right? Mm -hmm. He says, your words can be carried away by the wind. But you know what? Don't just uh, teach by words. Teach by example. Mm -hmm. Teach your children by example. Teach your grandchildren by example. I, uh, I was talking to one of my grandchildren the other day, and he told me this, and it really brought me to tears. One of my grandchildren came to me and says, People, they call me people, people, in all this world, you're the person that I look m up most to of anyone. I said, Well, what about your dad? He says, My dad's all right. He says, but I look up to you. And that floored me. That floored me. I did not know the weight that I was carrying in that grandchild that came and said that to me. And uh, you here, look, uh, we need to set the example. They're watching us. They're, ha they're seeing how we're going to uh, work out in situations difficult situations. They're going to see how you react to the circumstances adverse around you. And this is, a, this is why God chose Abraham. And he told him secrets. In fact, Abraham is one of the few people in the Bible that God called a friend. Did you know that? There's very few people that have reached that uh, uh, state of attainment in their life. Abraham was called a friend of God. And in Genesis 8, 18, the portion that we read before, I want to draw your attention there again. Abraham, uh, in chapter 18 of Genesis, Ge Genesis 18, verses 18 and 19. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and that all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. Does God know you, that you will be faithful to him, like he did Abraham? And notice what else it says there. And they shall keep the way of the Lord, to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him, that through Abraham was to come the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Amen? I don't know about you, but I want to be a blessing. I want to be a channel of blessing. And so I have to decide that I'm going to live the Lord and his precepts 
by example. Amen? By example. Number three, the third key that I think we need to take in mind to have a victorious family. Victorious families are where God is honored. <laughs> and each member in the family is important. Our children and our grandchildren need to see God, that God is honored. And they need to feel that each person is important. Did you know that it's a shame that in some families, uh, maybe one child is uh, sort of pampered more than the others. Maybe in some families, the other children might <laughs> see that a certain person is preferred other over others. That should not be. That should not be. Uh, the Bible says that each child is an inheritance from the Lord. And we should treat them as such. They are special. I have two daughters. And uh, I love them both dearly. In fact, I've got three daughters now. Because now I, I've taken on a step, a, my stepdaughter. I consider her my daughter also. And I've got a son. I have a stepson uh, through my wife also. So instead of two children now, I have four children. Each one is different. They're not the same, but they're all important. Amen. And we need to realize that. We need to realize that they are important. We need to make them feel important. We need to make them feel important. We need to show them that they were fearfully and wonderfully made by God. Amen? And so in victorious families, they need to see that God is honored. I'd like to bring your attention to Psalms, Psalms 127. Psalms 127, verses 3 through 5. <clears throat> Psalms 127, verses 3 through 5. Lo, children are an a heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy, or another word for happy is blessed. Blessed is the man that has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed as they shall speak with the enemy in the gate. And I love the verse 3. When I saw this for the first time, that children are an inheritance of the Lord. Your greatest possession is not your house. Your greatest possession is not that new car or your bank account. Your greatest possession is, first of all, your salvation in the Lord. And secondly, your family, your children. They are an inheritance of the Lord. Amen. And so we need to treat them as such. And in chapter 128, Psalms 128, verses 1 through 4. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord. Feareth the Lord means that reverence the Lord, that worships the Lord, that honors the Lord. Amen? Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shall thou be, and, uh, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be a fruitful vine at the sides of thine house. Thy children, like olive plants, round about thy table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed with that feareth the Lord. And jump down to verse 6. I love verse 6 here. The first part. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children. You know, I think about this and I think about Ed Siegler. He's got perhaps one of the largest families here in our church, eight children. Doesn't have one grandchild left yet. And he's always saying, oh preacher, pray for me. I want to see a grandchild. I want to see several grandchild children. I said, they'll come. And when they come, They'll come in clusters. Amen. 
They'll come in clusters. And uh, the Bible says, Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children. And so if Ed, if you're watching now, brother, look to the future. You're going to be blessed. Amen. God is going to give you those grandchildren. An inheritance of the Lord are our children. What a blessing. So the first three keys that I brought out before I bring the last one, the first three keys of a victorious family, you have to proclaim and you have to make the decision. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We as parents need to make that declaration. Second, to have a victorious family, we need to teach not in word only, but by example. Your children need to see in you as a father and a mother that you honor the Lord by example, like Abraham did. God knew that he could trust Abraham because he would teach his children the ways of the Lord. Number three, victorious families are those where God is honored openly and each member of the family is important. Everybody's important, amen? Each one is important. And last but not least, a victorious family. A victorious family is one that every member in the family builds each other up. You build each other up. Amen? You know, I've heard in times past, uh, I'm from Latin America, as many know I'm half Puerto Rican, and uh, in times past, I've heard from people that weren't necessarily Christians, but he said, ay, este hombre, oh my goodness, this man, why did I marry this man? I tell you what, you married him because you you loved him, first of all. I hope you did. Amen? And, uh, ay, mire para allá. Que estupido. I think you got that, right? <laughs> and they'll, sometimes they'll even say that in front of their kids. Tu papá es un estupido. No, ever say that. Yeah. Don't ever say that. Don't ever degrade your husband. Don't ever degrade your wife in front of your kids. Build them up. Honey, that meal was phenomenal. Amen? Thank you for that meal. Or uh, if your husband uh, is, a, is, is a, he's, not do, he's not much of a doing work at home, you say, honey, you never knew how handsome you look when you're mowing the lawn. <laughs> I mean, you just, you look so handsome. My goodness, he'll mow the lawn every week. He'll mow the lawn every week, amen? Because they're hungry for words of affirmation. We need to build each other up. We need to build each other up. And uh, for example, if your kids come and they brought a B and he says, oh my, a B, shouldn't that have been an A? Hey, if they got a B, say, wow. Praise the Lord. Maybe not every student is an A student. Maybe not every student is an A and B student. And if they're a C student, praise the Lord. Did you know that some of the world's greatest leaders today were C students? Some of the world's greatest leaders, they weren't A students, they were C students. But they had the stickability. I don't know if that's a word or not, but it sounds pretty good. Amen. They stuck it out and God used them and they attained high standards in the world for the honor and glory. So victorious families, we build each other up. We care for each other in love and we can find verses to I'll back this up in Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. Ephesians 4, 15 and 16. So victorious families edify each other in love. 
Ephesians 4, 15 and 16. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. We need to edify each other up. Amen? Edify each other up. I've uh, I told my wife, I pray that uh, I will never speak degrading of every, anybody. I want to look at something good to say. And if I can't find something good, I'll just shut up and pray. Amen? But look what it says in chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. It says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Sweet-smelling sweet savor, that means an odor that is sweet-smelling and is, and is good to the taste. That's what we should be in the home. Amen? We should bring a sweet odor in the home with our presence, with our words, with our demeanor, with our attitude. You know, uh, I hope nobody calls you Mr. Grumpy. Or did you know that sometimes I've seen that there are some women that are Mrs. Grumpy. I hope you're not Mr. Grumpy or Mrs. Grumpy. I hope that you would have an attitude that would be meaning and, and bring honor and glory to the Lord. Be followers of Christ, God, as dear children, and walk in love. Walk in love. Be kind one to another. That begins in the home. Be kind one to another. Be sympathetic one to another. Be merciful one to another. May words of, of uh, uh, edification freely flow, flow from your mouths one to another. Amen? Praise the Lord. I tell my wife every day of her life, and I've asked the Lord not to help me this, I tell her every day of my life, honey, I love you. I think that's right. Some people, I, I, I've heard some people, I've said that's just, wow. I haven't heard that from my husband in I don't know how many years. And the husband says, but I, you know it. You know I love you. You know I love you. But you know, you got to say it too. You got to say it too. Amen. And so we need to follow, be followers of the Lord in love. If you want a victorious family, we need to edify each other in love. Love is not just spoken. Love is shown in actions. Amen? I'll come up to my wife all the time. I say, honey, can I help you with something? She says, no, I'll do it. I'll wash the dishes. I said, let me wash the dishes. No, you wash the dishes and I have to wash them all over again. <laughs> I said, wow. <laughs> then show me. What do you want? And, and so I'll wash the dishes. She'll be over my shoulder. Okay. Do this and do that. Okay. And so I'm learning, hey, listen, at 73 years old, I'm learning how to wash the dishes correctly. Amen. Same thing, God bless. <laughs> but you know what? It's good that we can come up to our wives, honey, how can I help you? And even if she says, just sit there and watch me. All right, I'll sit here and watch you. But I'm willing to do whatever. Amen. A victorious family edifies each other in love. I'm going to go through the four points. And I pray that 
you will desire and pray to God that from this moment on, your family will be more victorious. Number one, declare it. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Secondly, victorious families teach by example. Victorious families teach by example. Three, victorious families honor God openly, reverence the Lord, worship the Lord, and every member of the household is important. They are fearfully and wonderfully made. They are an inheritance from the Lord. Consider your children that. It will bring a new light into your home. And fourth, victorious families edify each other in love. Love is not only said, love is shown. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this blessed, blessed opportunity to bring forth this practical message on having a victorious family. I pray that many have, uh, have nurtured from it and have uh, uh, been able to look at points that they can add and make their family a better place. Father, bless everyone that's watching uh, through the internet and those that are here in the auditorium. May we make a recommitment of our life that we are going to have a victorious family in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we have victorious families, our churches will be better and our nation will be better also. Father, bless us. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Those of you that are watching, or perhaps anyone here in the auditorium, are you saved? You say, what do you mean saved, Pastor? Have you accepted Christ openly as your Lord and Savior? You say, well, I've been to church all my life. I didn't ask that. I ask if you know the Lord personally. If not, would you let me lead you in a prayer right now? Would you let me? Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, I need you. I've boshed up my life, living it my way. And from this moment on, I want you to sit on the throne of my heart. And from this moment on, I call you to be my Lord and my Savior. Cleanse me from my sins. Help me to walk in thy ways. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here today. If you made a decision in your heart, we'd love to know about it. Would you call us, Temple Heights Baptist Church? And our telephone number is 813-985-5292. I repeat, 813-985-5292. Our office is open from Monday through Friday from 9 to 2, if you have any questions. And we'd love to hear about your decision. We're located on 5020 Puritan Road, Tampa, Florida, 33617. If you're a member of the church and you'd like to send in your tithes and offerings, uh, you can do that. Or if you want to participate, you can send those to Temple Heights, Baptist Church, P.O. Box, 290-392. I repeat, 
P.O. Box 290392, Tampa, Florida 33687. We're so thankful for everyone here. We're going to continue uh, with our services on Sunday until we see things get better in the Tampa Bay area. When we see things getting better because there's been a spike in uh, the number of people uh, with the coronavirus, and so we don't in any way want to put anyone in harm's way. And so we were thinking about starting Wednesday nights, but we're thinking of holding off just a little bit until things get a little better. We're going to take it step by step, and we will have all of our services CDC regulations. Mm -hmm. Even on Wednesday nights, when we have the, the uh, study, a Bible study, and the prayer time, when we do start. We'll let you know about that. And uh, look for us on Facebook, and look for us on YouTube, Temple Heights Baptist Church. God bless you. Thank you for coming.